Today, I call upon the Congress to promptly pass and to send to the states for ratification an amendment to our Constitution defining and protecting marriage as a union of a man and woman as husband and wife. My name is Jason West, and in 2004, I was arrested for performing 25 same-sex weddings. I moved to New Paltz in 1995 to go to college, right out of high school. And uh, after I graduated in 2000, a couple of us started to try to figure out what we could do to positively build something. We realized that uh, we all lived in the village of New Paltz. And that year, two seats were up for trustees and one seat uh, for the mayorship. Uh, so the three of us decided to run. Myself, Rebecca Rotzler, Julia Walsh ran for, for village board that year. Um, all three of us won. So we not only uh, took our seats, but had a majority on the village board. And, you know, began looking around for progressive policies we had the power to enact. So it's a very complicated and much deeper question. Uh, basically, I was sitting on one of my father's employees' laps while he was playing my mother's piano. And I was 11 years old, and I noticed how beautiful his arm was, and I sort of had a crush on him. And I was very, I think I was maybe eight, nine, maybe, t maybe 11 years old. And the older I got, when I was 14, 15, 16, I fell in love at 14 with the boy across the street. And my sister outed me at Christmas dinner when I was 17. And my father literally kicked me out of the house on Christmas Eve, and I never went back. And at such a young age, I thought, this doesn't make sense. Why, why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Why is this, does this happen to people? And how I had to bootstrap it, learn how to survive on my own, simply because I loved another person. And that didn't make any sense to me. It was illogical. I got involved with uh, gay rights and the hypocrisy and everyone, the President of the United States, the Pope. And I just couldn't accept that. I just felt like I had my pulse on what society was doing at that time. And I saw the backlash of repressing us more and more and people were getting fed up. We were tired of being arrested and losing our jobs and being kicked out as children. Beaten up. Beaten up. And I was so tired of it and so many other people were. So when I met this person I started dating, he was a major in the 82nd Airborne, bought this farm within a year and we moved in here and I met people in New Paltz that were very Progressive. I met Jason. He was brilliant. Um, he, he's a very a lot brilliant of people, guy. He, he really great is. Great orator. He would speak like he no one else. Had a lot of else. charisma. And the whole time, things were churning in my head. I said, "There's going to be something that's going to come together here." And there was a big movement, uh, nationally and internationally, about gay rights. And I just had a feeling this was the right time, and it was long overdue. And then Gavin Newsom started doing weddings in California. And then George W. Bush, President Bush, said in his State of the Union that we need to have a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. Uh, and it just seemed that the timing was, it was now. The timing was, we have to strike while the iron is hot. And while this is in the public consciousness. Uh, I remember uh, I was talking to the Queer Student Union on campus and they said, you know, well, what can you, what can you do for the LGBTQ community? I know that mayors can perform weddings and I've looked into it a little bit. I don't know whether same-sex marriage can be done by a village mayor, but I will look into it, and, and if possible, I'll, I think that's something we could do. So I started lobbying Jason here at the farmhouse. He was painting, and I would have his ear, because when I tried to meet with him in New Paltz, he was habitually late. He wouldn't show up, he wasn't focused, too many interruptions, so I'm like, fuck that, he's gonna paint, he needs money, I'm gonna have him paint moldings in my house. And then he stuck with me, listening to me. And I'm telling him all these things, sort of planting the seed 
that we can do this. And then I would tell him, you don't know, I said, you do know as a sense, but you really don't know how it is to be discriminated against and be told you're evil, you're a second class citizen, you don't have rights, I can't marry the man I, I love, I can't have children. I said, it really is bad, but we have the power to do it. And that was the whole thing. A lot of people didn't believe that we did have the power. Right. And I knew we did. Uh, the first concrete steps we took, though, was to have the village attorney look into the legal ramifications of this. There's an interesting wrinkle we found in the law, which says, if you don't have a marriage license and your marriage was properly solemnized, you're still married. And the person doing that solemnization is guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by a year in jail and a thousand dollar fine. So what we said, our argument then, was that this seemed to be completely legally possible. So all of a sudden, I was putting this all together and I'm meeting in his office and he was giving me a lot of pushback and didn't want to do it for many reasons. I didn't know then, like I do now, that he was apprehensive because he was afraid and he didn't want to ruin his job as the mayor. He wanted to focus on sustainability. It was his dream job too. It was too. his dream job. And he he had... really wanted to do good for his village, but I'm like, dude, you can fucking do good for the world. Why think just of New Paltz, you'll get more things done. He didn't have that, I don't want to say vision, but he didn't yeah. see beyond literally the village. Well, in some ways, he might have had the vision. And maybe the vision was what scared him. Because it did derail his administration. Really, what he wanted to do was small government. And this was a national issue. And I had to funnel it down and tell Jason, we're going to support you, not alone. We are here for you. We have to do this now. He didn't want to do it. I said, I don't want to take any credit for this. I want Jason West to get the credit because he's an elected official. I don't want to be any part of this. I just want to make it happen. So for three, four days, he was He's like, no, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm so sorry, this is not right to the village of New Paltz. I wish I could help you, but we don't know if it's legal, we're gonna be arrested. He wasn't afraid of getting arrested. No. He was more responsible. He was 24 years old thinking about money. And And how it was I gonna said, affect the village. Right, you know. and finally, I was feeling like I hit a wall and something hit me, and I sat right across from him at his desk, and I said, in my mind, and then it just came out, I said, Jason, it's okay. I know one day you're gonna do good for this country. I believe in you. Unfortunately, this is not the time, so it might happen in 10 or 20 years. He's like, oh, fuck you. I'm like, well, you gotta do it now. These opportunities don't happen very often in life or in history. This is the time. It's, but you will do something that we will know you for in 10 or 20 years. And I just walked out of his office. And he looked down. And he looked sad, and I went downstairs and I called Jeremiah Horrigan from the Times He was Hall with record, the record, yeah. The record, because now the press learned about what was happening, and we were denying it. We're like, oh, we don't know what you're talking about, but I called Jeremiah, I'm like, Jeremiah, we're doing it. Just leak it to the press. I said, let it be known, the mayor is going to do it. Without Jason's <laughs> approval, I said it's being done. Within minutes, Within minutes, I have goose flesh. I was in front of the village hall. Jason's phone started exploding. All of these people, it was like out of a movie for the next 24 hours. The, everyone in the world, literally, all these news organizations were calling. And I'm like, all right, because I had my own businesses. I'm like, we have to do a press release. Like, let's start faxing, at least read what we're gonna do. The phones exploded. I called those organizations back. I said, we're doing it. The press knows about it. So then Rachel and Julia, Right. Everyone I knew from town, we called them, we're like, you need to man the phones, this thing is exploding, and we're doing it. So Jason finally decided to do it lines, after you know. he saw instantly, virtually instantly, within minutes, that it was huge. And we thought that this was going to be front page on the Poughkeepsie Journal. You know, that we thought the New Paltz Times was going to cover this in depth. You know, that it was a local story, a, a big local story, but a local story. And what we didn't realize is that you know, New Paltz being an hour and a half from the media capital of the planet, uh, every major news organization could have a satellite truck here in an hour and a half. 
And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and everything went crazy and it became surreal. It was surreal for weeks. I remember I asked him early on if he and Jeffrey would want to be one of the couples that got married. And uh, I think it took him a little bit by surprise if I remember it because, and, and he's not the only one. Because remember in 2003, marriage equality wasn't the law anywhere. Uh, it was just still an idea being fought for. I can only imagine the, 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 the halting conversations that must have happened with couples that were all of a sudden given an option they didn't have before. And I know that, that William and Jeffrey discussed it thoroughly. They didn't give me an answer right away. They talked about it between, you know, between the two of them. And eventually got back to me and said, yeah, we're, we're in. Um, I think, I think the, the condition was we're in, but we're the first couple. So the way it was set up that day, there were things that happened that I was just not aware of, that just appeared as far as I was concerned. One of those things was a stage that was dropped right here behind you. And there were thousands of people watching behind, uh, from behind the stage, uh, hundreds of people here who were the close friends and family that we brought out chairs for, uh, with an aisle come, and the couples were inside and the, uh, the, the, the aisle was right outside the door. So we'd come right down here to the, up on stage, we'd, we had the, the PA system, we'd do the weddings and they'd move on. So the first couple was William and Jeffrey. We do the wedding, we said, okay, yeah, now I pronounce you partners for life. Crowd goes nuts. So that happened and the second couple happened and the third and the fourth. And this time my lawyer leaned, you know, pulls me aside, leans in and says, I've been watching the cops. They're not moving. You know, you're, I think you're good. They're gonna let you do it. So I thought we were doing 12, and then we got to the 13th couple came out, and then the 14th couple came out, and the 15th, and then it got up to 25. I had no idea how many, I, we were at hour three or four before they stopped, and I still had no idea how long we we're gonna keep going. All that happened was the chief of police just came up to me afterwards and said, you know, report to the police station, we're not gonna cuff you. We're, you're not a flight risk. You're the mayor of the village, you're not going anywhere. Um, so just come get booked, you know, sometime tomorrow. So it was, yes, I was arrested, but it wasn't like a, a, you know, TV situation where I'm running down the street, tearing off my shirt and they tackled me and handcuffed me to, you know, drag me to the station. It was all very polite and very, very professional. This whole, this whole area was flooded with people. If you see the pictures back then, um, after I was arrested and, and I was arraigned in town court, um, I think the count was two or 3000 people were out for my arraignment. And there were very few people, no one, no one in the courthouse. There was a brass band playing Battle Hymn of the Republic and you could hear the horns and, it was sh and the, the chants were vibrating the walls of the courthouse while we were trying to, uh, trying to enter my plea of not guilty to, uh, to criminal acts. After all the scary parts, the drama and everything else, if you had to do it again, would you do it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would too. Absolutely. I had the time of my life in a lot of other ways because oh, it, it was this incredible. great adventure. I mean, you it really was hard. and you felt like you a were doing something right. so like big, big and important, and important and that people affected were so people. Grateful. Absolutely, I would do it again because I don't say this very often, but so many people that know us from that time. They all tell me, you know, that this really was a turning point for the United States, that some small little village stood up to the oppression and made a huge change, and it really did. You know, I think just the fact that of people, more and more people feeling safe enough to come out is the biggest driver of that whole movement. Normalizing marriage equality that when you see your neighbors as the ones getting married, when you see thousands of your community getting out in support, it's harder and harder to hold that position that marriage equality is a sin or it's bad or it's wrong for whatever reason people thought it was wrong, right? Um, I like to think that we moved a whole lot of people off the fence and, and onto the side of marriage equality with, the, with those uh, weddings. So in, in essence, if you think about it here in 2022, almost 18 years later, right from the New Paltz Weddings, I think the world, and the world in America, has changed for the better in so many ways. With people of color, women's rights, gay rights, 
So many things. But so it's things not a battle you could ever stop fighting because I think that there's, with the hate groups in this country, we have to stay proactive. And I'd like to think that we played some significant role in the fact that gay marriage was legalized just a few years later. We're here today to make people be aware that very unknown little people can make big things happen. And we have to inspire one another and pony up and meet like-minded people and not take for granted what we have today. It was the most meaningful political thing I've ever done after 20 years in politics, or 20 years in local government in some form, really. Um, it helped a lot of people, and for that I'm grateful. Um, I was in a position where I could make a political statement that may have some positive consequences without putting anyone else at risk. It was, you know, you know the person, the officiate it's the weddings who got arrested, not the, not the couples trying to get married. So if you're in a position where you can, you can help people to that degree and on that scale, and you don't, you know, that's a huge, huge problem. You know, the problem isn't evil people, the problem is the, the ambivalent people who let them get away with it.